What do you do in a Hindu temple? Let's find out. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Welcome to the Broom Street Ganesha Temple. Thank you. You're welcome. Would you like to take off your shoes? Sure. Great. You can put them over here. So you imagine you're coming to a temple, and so you are seeing your um, your Ishtadevata, your chosen deity. The, the what if I don't have one? Um, that's no problem. But you've come here for a reason because you want to be in the presence of the devas, or lack of a better word, the gods. Um, and so whenever you're going to see someone that you really care about or you want to, um, you know, uh, spend time with, you might, as you've done, you've brushed your hair and you put on some nice clothes and you've taken a shower and you've made yourself not so much presentable, but um, you have... Um, uh, you've uh, arisen sort of to the moment of the sacredness of what's going to happen. Even if you're coming into a temple every day, you want to make sure you're wearing clean clothes and that you've prepared yourself mentally for the worship you're going to offer, the prayers you're going to say, whatever it might be. But the main thing to have in your mind when you come in is that I'm coming into a sacred space. And then how, however you need to prepare yourself for that, that's what you do. Please come into the temple. You've taken off your shoes, you've lost your hands. Oh, there's a bell. There's a bell. Can I ring the bell? You can ring the bell. Can I reach the bell? You can just press the bell. Woo! Excellent. What is the point of the bell? So the ringing of the bell is to dispel any bad energy or any negative energy, and also call the gods to be present while you offer your prayers. What if they're sleeping? The gods never sleep. Ah! Unless it's nighttime. Okay. Come on in. This is a donation box. Temples run on donations. Good money. I did, it's in my bag actually. We can take care of that later. So we just passed by Ganesha and now Sai Baba and I haven't bowed down. Should I be bowing down to them? You may. Um, some people like to prostrate fully on the floor. It's traditional for men to lay themselves out flat and for women to get onto the knees and bow the forehead to the floor. This is a gesture of offering and devotion. And also as soon as you lay your head down on the floor, you're supposed to feel that all of your troubles and all of your worries are just being left at the feet of the gods, and then you come up from that with your mind refreshed, as though you are ready, and all of your worries are going to be needed. Huh. Okay. And so now, you come to the main theme of the temple. This is called the Mula Devaka. The Mula Devaka, this is Ganesha. He is the form of Abhayankara Mahakampati. Abhayankara means the remover of fear. And so this hand, gesture like this, is the Abhaya, the fearless mudra. So he's giver of no fear. And the typical process is you come in, you bow before the Mula Devaka. So you can do that if you like to. And say whatever prayer you have to say. What if I don't know it? You don't have to say anything. You can just be in the presence of the divine, which is even better sometimes than saying a prayer. Because by being in the presence, you soak that presence into yourself. Okay, I like that. Okay. And so then after you've said your prayers, you've done your meditations, so or repeated your mantra, then there are a few sacraments that are given that the devotees take part in. So during something called puja, which is the ritual worship, there are 16 different things typically that are offered to the devas. And the things that are left over from those offerings are then received by the devotees as prasad or as blessings. And they all have symbolic meanings. So if you come over here, the first thing that you would do is... a lot of apples. That's a lot of apples. <laughs> and you will see one. This is called the Deepa Arati, which means the flame, and it has been offered to Ganesha. In fact, all the deities are offered the flame. It's symbolic of the light of awareness, the light of divinity. As well, the word Deva means a being of light. And one of the qualities of light as a wave is that it exists everywhere um, equally at all times without any one central point. So a light wave exists equally everywhere at all times. Um, like divine beings. And each of them are overseeing different cosmic functions. And so the um, Arati lamp is symbolic not only of the light of awareness, but the light of the devas. 
So what we do is we hold our fingertips over the light and then symbolically bring that light to touch the eyes, asking that we bring this light of awareness to clarify our field of perception, the light perception, so that we can see reality maybe a little bit more deeply. Some people touch their fingers three times, some people one time. There's going to be um, uh, different personal um, preferences and different regional and cultural ways of placing your hands over the light. The main thing is um, symbolically drawing this light of awareness to yourself, but eventually recognizing that the same light of awareness is the light of awareness in my heart. It's there all the time, but here I'm reminding myself. Does this stay throughout the day? This stays throughout the day. If there's no one in the temple, then it is extinguished. So after you have the um, uh, the RT, then you receive the water which has been given um, to the devas during puja. And so you put your right hand out. Right hand. By the right hand, the yeah. right hand is considered to be auspicious. And you make a tight little cup there. You put the water and then you sip it through. Then after that, you can put either the um, red tilak on your head, or usually women will take the red and sometimes the gentlemen will take the white, sometimes everyone takes both. And so you can put that, that's a symbol of devotion. Um, the white powder is um, ash. And one of the ideas behind the ash is that when something burns down to ash, uh, the form that it was in before no longer exists. It can never be reconstructed again from that. And there's nothing left further to burn away. And all that's left over is ash. So from a spiritual point of view, the process of um, burning away all of our attachments and our samskaras, like the, the subtle impressions which drive our perceptions of the world, when all those things are burned away, and there's nothing left to be burned further, all that's left is conscious awareness. And so that's what this is symbolic of. And then the red powder is symbolic of the, um, the divine energy of the mother, Shakti. Red is equals to energy. Uh, and then after that, um, you are given some prasad. And this means the, uh, any of the food items that have been offered have been enjoyed by the Lord. Um, and the gods live off of the subtle parts of all the offerings. So the smells of the food and of the incense and the warmth of the light and um, et cetera, et cetera. So when you offer food to the gods, for the most part, they're not gonna physically eat them, although every once in a while miracles do occur. But what they live off of are the subtle essences of all of the offerings. And so that's one of the reasons why when we come into the temple, we have we can have this idea that the devas are interfacing with our subtle essences as well. So clean clothes and a bath and washing our hands and all these types of things are so that um, the subtle essences that we're bringing into the temple are also harmonious and pleasing to the devas. Um, so, uh, would you like a banana or an apple? I'm taking an apple because they're really cute. Okay, they're super cute. So Thank that you. is for you to enjoy. And um, then, after receiving that, you can walk around the temple. This is called a Pradakshina. And, the, and um, you walk usually to the right. In Buddhism, sometimes you see to the left, but we're in the temple, so we're going to go to the right. Walk either one time around or three times, and then after, you prostrate one more time. Okay. The reason for walking around the temple yeah. is to symbolize that you're keeping the devas at the center of your being. One more time you can. Okay, so this basic process is followed in any temple pretty much that you go to. And the most important thing is you see the deity. So this is called darshan. Darshan is to see the deity and to be seen by the deity as well. So you can see here we have um, eyes that are on top of Ganesha and in many of the temples you see different types of eyes, jeweled eyes or decorated eyes. And you want to, to look into the eyes of the deity and have the deity look back at you because these are living presences here, they're not statues of stone, they're not idols, um, they're living presences and um, living presence. So you look into the eyes, you have the deity see you as well and that process of seeing and being seen is called darshan. I have some questions. Go ahead. How close can I get 
to Ganesha. You can walk all the way up to here, but you would not reach inside to touch the deity or to lift anything up on your own. Okay. So I see that there's Shiva here, mm -hmm. and it looks like there are other deities here, maybe another Ganesha. Is that a Hanuman? Yes. So what and I the goddesses. Come here. Do I have to pray to all of them? You don't have to pray to all of them, um, but you can pray to all of them. Um, they're all here because we are following in the um, tradition of the Panchayatana Puja, which is the worship of the five deities. And this comes from Shankaracharya, Adi Shankaracharya. And the idea presented is that Brahman, the absolute pure undifferentiated consciousness, is difficult to approach in the unmanifest form. But in the manifest form, it's easier to form a relationship with pure consciousness. And the five um, deities that are conduits or actual complete representations or manifestations of Brahman are Ganesha, Vishnu, Shiva, Devi, and Surya, and sometimes Skanda, especially in South India. Can you teach me a simple prayer in Sanskrit? Sure. So this is a very simple prayer, and this is applicable at all times and all places for all people. So you repeat after me. Lokaha. Lokaha. Samastaha. Samastaha. Sukino. Sukino. Avantu. Avantu. And you can repeat that over and over. And it means Lokaha, all the worlds. Samastaha, established in them. Sukino, happiness. Avantu, may it be. So may all the worlds be happy. That's beautiful. Yeah.